What's going on everybody? Brandon with Jarhead Diagnostics. How you guys been? I've got a pretty good case study that I wanted to stop by and show you guys. Um, the case study in, at hand has a whole lot of theory that we've always heard, but maybe I've never seen, and I'll be honest with you, the with the extent of what's going on with this, I personally never seen it, and this was the first time, so I was like, it's pretty interesting. I'm going to show you guys. Um, I'm going to kind of apologize about the videos and the photos that might be in this case study just because it was a late night. I was working on the vehicle and I didn't bring out, you know, this camera. It was all off my cell phone. The screen captures are just cell phone photos of the um, computer screen versus extra screen captures because this video is kind of more of a, a afterthought. Um, I wanted to kind of also start with saying that this uh diagnostic process that i went through it threw me for a loop this vehicle took my lunch money and kicked me in my nuts i mean it just it is what it is um luckily though i had a excellent group of friends that i could lean on and they kind of helped me through the diagnostic process and whenever we got to the finale of it all of us were like well holy crap you know just the the outcome kind of really wasn't what none of us were thinking. So I wanted to, you know, personally uh, thank, you know, PJ Walter with Voltage Drop Diagnostics and uh, like Joey Fitzpatrick and um, Isaac Rodell or Rodiesel, depends on if you guys, you know, know from Facebook or personal and, you know, several others there. We've got a, a pretty good group chat that <clears throat> whenever we have issues going on, we're able to kind of lean on each other and it helps out a lot. So that's kind of one thing I'd recommend for you guys is, you know, develop your network of friends, like-minded individuals. So that way when you get stuck on something, it can definitely, you know, help guide you in the right direction. Because sometimes you might feel like you're on an island all by yourself and you can't figure something out. But if you've got somebody that you can lean on, then it'll definitely be able to help out. So, you know, kind of hang out with me and, and let's go through this thing um, step by step. So kind of a backstory on the vehicle is um, it was towed to me from another shop about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, give or take a little bit. And the other shop had put um, an ignition coil plugs and it was still coming back with a code of a P2305, which is um, spark ignition coil ionization time or, or something like that and whenever they sent it the other shop sent the customer to me they said you know hey this thing needs a pcm whenever i got it the vehicle 100 percent needed a pcm the coil driver was actually fried so the coil driver was never commanding the circuit to activate on cylinder two p2305 was for cylinder two's uh, misfire that we we're having ohm the wires load tested the wires from the coil to the pcm everything checked good um the injector checked good there was nothing that said please don't fire this coil so i put a pcm in it put the pcm in um and then fired it up it was running kind of rough and then instantly that pcm got taken out again cool driver circuit on the same one and come to find out the ignition coil that they had put in was a aftermarket ignition coil and bad out of the box shorted primary took out the pcm within probably about 30 seconds to a minute of running so we had the coil and plugs swapped out with mopar parts got another pcm put it in fired up ran beautiful for about five minutes then instant misfires cylinder two was shut down again same code pops up p2305 thinking man what the heck so i shut it off reset the code fired it back up perfectly fine run good for about two three four five minutes bam misfire and i'm like well what the heck shut it off this time it would not reset on startup would not reset just constant misfire i wanted to light the car on fire because i was kind of at my wits end for the vehicle in general so i walked away from it for about two or three hours let myself cool down let the vehicle cool down sometimes you have to do that sometimes it's not good to just you know run all the way through it i came back later in the evening and fired it up ran good i was like okay this is strange same thing after running for about five minutes or so started misfiring reset ran for a few minutes misfire comes back 
and then all of a sudden it was just a constant misfire. And this is kind of where the um, theories that we always hear about, but sometimes you might never see. Whenever we hear heat changes resistance, you know, higher heat, higher resistance, and all that sort of stuff, this 100% comes into effect. Remember I told you earlier that I had ohmed out, low tested the harness, everything was good. It was, until it got hot. Once it got hot, then it raised all the way up to um, the one wire that I ohmed out to begin with, which ohmed out at like maybe two ohms, and it got hot. It actually went to 0.5 kilo ohms, and then by the time I got out, you know, my phone to kind of do a quick recording of that, it actually had dropped down to it was like three or four or 500 ohms of resistance. And then I found out where I could grab a hold of the harness, pull on the harness, and get my um, resistance to drop down into specs. So what was happening was, as the temperature got hotter, it caused higher resistance inside of the circuit. Once it got that high resistance, once it got to a certain you know, level, the PC realized it couldn't control that coil, so it just shut it down. I've got, you know, screen capture showing where it's like perfect, boom, 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 firing, and then all of a sudden it like dropped half of the, half of its current, and then drop, 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 and then you could see where it just, a tiny little section of, it was still trying to control it, but it just couldn't because there's too much resistance through the circuit. I'm gonna kind of stop here. I'm gonna go into the video that I took last night of the whole situation going on with the vehicle. I'll kind of plug in some of the videos, uh, photos, and everything that I had going on then. So that way you guys can kind of see, you know, the actual theory of operation, um, or the, th not theory of operation, but just the, the theory of heat changes resistant. And just kind of follow along with me. All right, everybody. So I've been having kind of a issue with this Jeep right here. As you can tell by all the cluster of stuff going under the hood. It was originally brought to me um, probably about a month ago for a PCM. And what was going on with it was the PCM had no control over ignition coil number two. Verified it, um, the PCM was never commanding the coil to fire. So... I load tested the circuits, uh, ohmed out the circuits to everything, was checking it, it was all good. Put a PCM in it. Put that PCM in, fired it up, and instantly, well not instantly, within about 30 seconds, that PCM was taken out. Come to find out, the shop that had sent it to me had actually put a new ignition coil on coil two, which is under the intake. And <clears throat> so, warranted out the PCM for him because I should have caught the, the failed coil and we put a Mopar coil in it. Everything was good. Started the engine and it was running really, really good um, for about five minutes to 10 minutes, give or take a little bit. And then it started misfiring. Shut it off, cleared the code out, it threw the same code again about an ignition uh, coil circuit to uh, P2305. So reset the code, started up, started running fine. Within a couple of minutes, shut down again. So I'm thinking, crap, did it fry another PCM? What the heck's going on with it? And so I started down a rabbit hole. I'll put a couple of clips in where you can kind of see um, the current ramp was perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden it just it dipped way down and then it dipped way, way down. And then it was like hardly anything. But you could still see kind of where the PCM was commanding the circuit on and off, on and off, but it just, it had no current flow. And so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So then I pierced in right here at the PCM, used my scope and I still had 12 volts. Now this kind of comes back to where load testing and everybody always talks about load testing and, and why it's important. I had 12 volts here at the PCM on my control wire, which means power is going all the way through the ignition coil, but it's not make, but it's not being able to carry the current. Why can't it carry the current? Because of high resistance. I didn't know about the high resistance under a hot engine. So this vehicle actually, once the engine got hot, the current flow went way down because of the increased uh, resistance in the harness. 
only for that one circuit. And as you'll see in a video here in a second, you can actually see where I can pull on the harness a little bit and my resistance is changing. <clears throat> I can let this engine cool completely down and I'll probably do that here in a second. I'll let it cool completely down and I'll retest the same circuit and I'll show you where the harness is good and I didn't do anything. Minus let the engine cool down. So I thought this was a pretty cool video. Um, PJ Walter with uh, voltage drop diagnostics, which it's kind of fitting for this situation because it is a voltage drop issue in an essence. Um, <clears throat> was like, hey, why don't you just double check that? And then he's like, hey, make a quick video out of it because this is kind of showing you the difference in heat causing higher resistance. And I mean, we've all heard it in theory, but this is my first time, I think, where I've actually seen where heat is actually causing a circuit to fail and cause this higher resistance. That was kind of interesting. And then to kind of test my theory, I went in and all I did was just kind of pierced in right here at this wire. And then I pierced in down, like I said, down here at the PCM to bypass the harness. Once I bypass the harness, vehicle starts, runs fine. I let it run for almost 20 minutes with no misfire. So it kind of gives me that reassurance that I know that it's in the harness. Now, under the intake back here, there is a connector, connector C130. There's a high probability that it could be inside of that connector because like I could grab a hold of the harness at the intake, pull on it, and my resistance values would change to the PCM. So there's a high probability that it is from C130. I haven't gotten that far into it to see is there something going on like high like corrosion in there or um, whenever we had the failed ignition coil, did it potentially you know burn a pin inside of that connector? I, I don't know. Um, we're gonna get the intake off tomorrow kind of check it over and look at it. Um, but I just wanted to stop by, let you guys take a look at that. Interesting find. Like I said, it's not something that you see every single day. So all right, so it's the next morning. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys. I've got it connected up. You can see the ohms. They're a whole lot lower than what they were. It's still a little high, still at the about, it's fluctuating between 10 and 15 ohms, which is still kind of on the high end, but it would still allow current to pass through. So it's this just 100% goes to show you that heat can definitely change a lot. Cause whenever I, like I said, when I first connected up, it was at like half a kilo ohm and then as it was cooling down, it dropped all the way down to like 200 ohms. And then now it's all the way down to almost 10, 10 to 15. So it's kind of back to the, the theory that a lot of people have always said of, you know, high heat, high resistance. This is 100% um, an example of that. Like I said, this is kind of crazy. Um, so thank you guys for following along. Um, always remember the dynamic change of the your diagnostic process sometimes things just might be out of your control that you don't know you might need to test a circuit when it's hot when it's cold when it's warm when it's not what kind of threw me for a loop on this one was the initial time i looked at it it was a man-made fault for the ignition coil um so i thought whenever i finally got a, the coil replaced and the new pcm put in that whenever I got the misfire after five minutes or so that I'd lost another PCM and let's just say I was heartbroken but after letting it cool down I realized that you know it kept changing as it got hotter being able to kind of go back into my process it was just I thought it was pretty cool to to see something like that firsthand because like I said sometimes seeing that firsthand you don't get to do often so Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you um, just see where you might have done something differently, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Always remember, did you die today, bro?